2.1, day one. We're talking about input and output. You should have your notes out in front of you to take these down. Uh, that's what I'm going to check for homework tomorrow. So the first example is f of x equals 3x minus 5. So it should give you a function. And then I ask you, what is f of 0? So hopefully by now you know that means that uh, where there was an x, now there's a 0. So that just means to take 0 and plug it in for x and get an answer. So 3 times 0 minus 5, that's negative 5. So f of 0, that represents a point. 0, negative 5. So my next question is, when will f of x equal 0? So that's a, different, that's a different scenario than the previous one. When will the output for f of x be 0? Not what happens when I plug 0 in. This is a different scenario. So this is essentially saying, when will the y value be 0? Well, so how do we solve for that? We can substitute 0 in for f of x. So where there used to be f of x equals 3x minus 5, now it's just 0 equals 3x minus 5. And then we can solve that pretty easy. Add 5 to both sides. 5 equals 3x. Divide by 3 on both sides to get x by itself. So x equals 5 thirds. So that point would be 5 thirds comma 0. So we still have two points on the graph. One was plug 0 in for x and get 0, negative 5. The other really we just plugged in 0 for y and we got 5 thirds comma 0. So the other thing you should know about these two points is they're both intercepts. They're both intercepts. Which one is which? Well this one has a 0 on the x and a negative 5. So this one's 0, negative 5. So go 0 and then go down negative 5. That's got to be the y-intercept. This one is go over 5 thirds up 0. So this has got to be the x-intercept. Okay, so uh, our next example, example two. I'm going to start by drawing uh, some axes. We're going to plot some points here. So I'm just going to put tick marks on the y-axis up to four, and then tick marks on the x-axis out to seven. And then I'm going to give you some points to plot here. So zero, two, two, four, four, two, and six, zero. So let's see, and, and try to keep this um, pretty neat. And that should help things. So, 0, 4, I got on there, or excuse me, 0, 2, and then I got 2, 4, 4, 2, and 6, 0. Okay, and then I'm going to sketch this curve through these points, and that's going to be my function g of x. So, I'm going to give you the graph of this g of x function. I've given you some points on it to help us make the graph, and then I want you to put h down there between 6 and 7. I want you to add this little tick mark. This is going to be h. And then corresponding with that tick mark over here on the y-axis, I want you to put another little tick mark. That can be d. Okay, and we'll get to that later. Here's h, and then there's d. Okay, so my first question about this graph is what's g of 2? So can you read the graph and come up with g of 2? Well, instead of g of x, you're going to plug in 2 for the x. So let's see. On the y-axis there, what corresponds with 2. If I could just trace it up here, 2 for the x. What's the output for that? Well, looks like it's going to be, if I can trace that, 4. So what is g of 2? That's 4. Okay. Um, next question. Let me go back here. g of what value gives you 2. g of what value gives you 2? So now I'm looking for an x value. So what the output will be 2. What x value do I plug in to get that? So let's see. Let's go to the outputs here. Here's 2. Right, here's 2. Well, you already know one of the answers right there, right? So if I'm at 2, there's two answers. There's two answers here. Either it's 0 or it's 4, right? So if, you, if your output is 2, the two x values that could, you could have plugged in would be 0 or 4. And I'll trace those down, too. So here's 4. And then this one is 0. OK. 
Okay, my next question. What is g of h equal to? Well, if you can see by now, um, that's, that's really why we, have, we put that value for d over there too. So if I can trace over here on the h, so if I put in h into this function, that's my x value. If I put in h, what does that correspond to on the output? Well, there's my x, so what's my y? What's my height here? Well, that's actually why we drew that d value in there. So h corresponds to d. So if you plug in h, the value for your output is actually just d. Okay, so this example is really just to have practice reading the graph, like inputs on the x's, outputs on the y's, where are we at? If this is our input, what's our height? If this is our output, what was our input down on the x-axis? So that, this example is really just checking to see if you can read a graph and come up with those things, even if it's just letters. Okay, example three. So I'm going to give you this function, x squared, f of x equals x squared plus 3. My first question is just, what is f of a minus 2? So you guys have had some practice with this sort of question with the mastery exams. What's f of a minus 2? So notice I try to color code a little bit here. That just means go plug in a minus 2 where you see an x up here. Okay, so I think we can handle that. So I write x squared plus 3. And then where I saw an x, I just put, plugged in a minus 2. Okay, don't make the mistake of squaring this a squared and then 2 squared, right? That's not how you do this. You would have to foil this out. Well, let's talk about that shortcut for foiling these types of things. So I'm going to leave it in parentheses, this a minus 2 squared. So remember, it's square the first term, so that's a squared. Multiply these two together, so that's negative 2a. And then double that, so negative 4a and then square the last term. So negative 2 squared, that should be 4. Okay, um, and then let's just clean that up a little bit, combine like terms, we have a squared minus 4a plus 7. Okay, not too bad, we've done things like that. Um, I'm going to ask you another question about this function. What's f of a minus f of 2 equal to? So not f of, these are two different things. f of a minus 2, right? That's different than what's f of a minus f of 2. So those are the, there are two individual functions there. f of a minus f of 2. We're going to evaluate them separately. So let's set that up. One's going to be f of a, right? x squared plus 3, x squared plus 3. So a goes in there for that one, 2 goes in there for that one. That's all I want you to do. And then from there, the math's pretty simple, right? a squared plus 3, nothing to do. The only thing I want to note here is that you've got to distribute this negative to both. So that's really critical. I drew the brackets here so we wouldn't forget to distribute that negative to both of those terms. So that's minus 4, minus 3, or just a squared minus 4. Also, if you factor that one, that's the difference of two squares. So that could be a plus 2, a minus 2 also. Either way is fine. So the big thing to note here is that f of a minus 2 is a lot different than the result you get for f of a minus f of 2. Uh, we've seen these, um, we've seen this notation for like uh, y values for our slope. All right, last example. Example 4 is a word problem. It starts out with an object is launched. So an object is launched, its height, h, is in meters. That's a function of time, t, which is in seconds. Okay, so I'm going to give you the equation for this. This is h of t equals negative 4.9t squared plus 19.6t plus 58.8. So if you've had any physics in the past, you might have seen this for a projectile motion. Okay, so my first question, part A, evaluate and interpret, which means explain, by the way, what is h of 1.2? So 
So h of 1.2. So instead of h of t, we're going to plug in 1.2 for the time. So what do we get? We evaluate h of 1.2. So wherever you see a t, plug in 1.2. If you have your calculator on, you can check me on this. Should get 75.264. And since that's the height, right, the output is the height, that's in meters. And you can also check that on your calculator if you've already graphed this in your calculator. Okay, so what does that mean? Interpret that. So there's a height of 75.264 meters when? Okay, so that's after 1.2 seconds. 1.2 seconds. That's the whole point here. So the input seconds, so 1.2 seconds, we're at this height. So after 1.2 seconds, the object is at a height of 75.264 meters. OK, so the next piece, part B. When will the object, when will the object hit the ground? So that's just a general question. When will it hit the ground? So if you know anything about uh, what type of graph this is, this is a, a quadratic. It actually makes an upside down parabola. So it looks something like this, like that. So this would be the t on the x-axis. This would be the height on the y-axis. So when would it hit the ground? Somewhere right there, right, where it hits the x-intercept, or in this case, the t-intercept. OK, so. Algebraically, that's asking this question. When will h of t equal 0? So when will the height be 0? Remember, h of t is our output. So what can you plug in for t? What time gives you an output of 0? So essentially, we're looking at what y value. What can you plug in for the t that gives you an output of 0? So the height will be 0. So uh, let's plug in 0 for h of t. And then we can solve for t. So there's a way to solve this without your calculator. You could just use the quadratic formula, I guess. But since we all have calculators, we're not going to do that. So let's start by putting this in our calculator. So go ahead and graph it in y1. Graph the function in y1. And I'll go ahead and tell you the steps. You're going to hit second, trace, 0. So you're going to find the 0, that x-intercept. Second, trace, 0. So when the graph looks like this, that'll give you the zero right there. But I'm going to go ahead and show you on my calculator what that looks like. All right, so I've already entered all my, all my values into y1 here. So I've got negative 4.9x squared plus 19.6x plus 58.8. So that looks all good right now. So if I go ahead and hit graph right now, let's see. So I can, I can sort of see that there's going to be an upside down parabola that goes up and comes down. But we really only care about this positive value right here. What is this zero right here? Okay. So you could go hit, go ahead and hit second trace zero and find it. I'm going to adjust the window a little bit. So I'm going to go to window, and then I don't need all that negative stuff on the x-axis. So I'm just going to go from negative one uh, to ten. That's okay. And on the y-axis, I'm going to change it to let's say seventy, let's say eighty. So the y-max, I want to change that to eighty. Because I know it goes at least 58.8. That was the starting height. That's like the y-intercept. OK, so let's hit graph. Oh, there we go. So there's my object being thrown, right? Starts 58.8, goes up, comes down, and then it hits the ground. So what is this value? So now we go second, trace, 0. And then it says left bound. So you need to go to this 0, right? So here's the 0. Right there, you know where it's at, the x-intercept, that's the zero. It'll say left of it. So use the left and right arrow keys to get a point to the left of it. That's good enough. Hit enter. Now get a point to the right of it. That's good enough. It's to the right of it, right? In fact, the y values are even negative here. Hit enter. And it says guess. I'm not going to make a guess. I'm just going to enter one more time. So one more time, hit enter. What do you know? It's perfectly at six seconds. So x equals 6 when y equals 0. So the ball must hit the ground. The height is 0 when the time is at 6 seconds. All right, so when will the object hit the ground? We just found it in our calculator. That's t equal to 6 seconds. 
Okay, last question here. Um, what time? What time does the object reach its max height? What time does the object reach its max height? So technically, you could do this without a calculator too, but I won't go into that since we already have our calculators out. So essentially, what I'm asking is h of t. When is that a max? When is the height equal to a maximum value? We don't even know what the max is, but we'll find that too. So at what time does it reach the max? And then we'll also find out what the highest point is, the max height. So if you're familiar with some of those calculator commands, that's just going to be second trace max. So on your calculator, once you graph it, you just hit second trace, and we're going to look for the max. That'll be the top of the hill. That'll be your highest point. So let's go ahead and look at that on the calculator again. All right, so here we are back at the calculator. Here's my graph. I'm going to go ahead and hit second, trace. That's this button right here, trace. And then give me maximum, because we're going to find the maximum height here. OK, so it says left bound and right bound. Now I'm kind of off the window a little bit, but you can tell the top of the hill is up here somewhere. All I need to go do is go left and right of it. So let's go left of the max and right of the max. doesn't matter exactly where. Just Keep going, keep going, keep going. Yeah, that's good enough. That's left bound. Hit enter. Now let's go to the right bound. So arrow to the right. There we go. So now we're on the right. Clearly to the right of the hill. We're a little bit below it. Hit enter. And it says guess. Hit enter one more time. So our max height, look at that. At two seconds, we reach a height of 78.4 meters. That's what that means because our T is our x-axis. So at two seconds, we'll reach a height of 78.4 meters. OK, finally, for our max height. So max height of 78.4 meters reached at two seconds. So algebraically, how does that look in green here? So that's h of 2 is 78.4. That's our maximum point right there. Time is 2, the height, the output was 78.4. All right, that's it for these notes. I'll see you in class.